to begin cleaning, make sure your oven's in the off position and cool. This video is going to contain the daily maintenance for the, the high H conveyor series. The 1618, the 2020, and the 2620 units. There's slight differences in between the models when it comes to cleaning and disassembling, and we'll get to those in a moment. And today what we're going to do is we're going to pull the extenders off, the chain guard, and then the crumb tray underneath. I'm going to place that on the car so I can transport it a little bit easier. I'm going to open the door by just removing these latches. It's going to come out and lift straight off. Then I'm going to pull my jet plates out. Now it doesn't matter which way you pull them out or where they go because they are interchangeable, top and bottom. You do that by just pulling that handle and we'll tug, pulling them out. Use two hands because they can be a little bit heavy. We're going to come around here and we're going to pull the same thing. I'm going to pull the crumb tray and the extender out. Then pull the last chain guard out. The 1618, I'm sorry, the 2020 and the 2620 have the second cog and chain set, which is basically for the split belt assemblies. If there's no split belt on either one of the ovens, then you won't need this chain. So, and it'll only be on the other side. So now we're gonna work on removing the conveyor assembly. To do that, we're going to lift up, grab hold of the chain, and this takes a little practice here. Lift it. Go back to the other side. So now I can lift the entire assembly up, push that forward, and pull the chain off. Leave the chains there. Grab the unit with both hands and pull out. And place on the cart to be clean. We're going to be cleaning all these parts with approved TurboChef oven cleaner. But this jet plate, both of them, have a top piece which can be pulled off by lifting on one side with a handle and pushing back. And this way, you can spray this and allow it to set while this piece is generally clean and can be used readily. To clean the interior cavity of the oven, I'm just going to grab a paper towel, just get some of this loose debris and kind of sweep that out. And then I'll pick that up a little bit later. But a lot of this debris I can get out rather easily. Okay. Then I'm going to take my Turbo Chef oven cleaner and a uh, wet towel and spray the oven cleaner directly onto the towel. I'm trying to avoid spraying directly in the oven because in the, in the very back is the catalytic converter that allows this oven to be ventless. So I'm going to place this on and let this soak in for about five minutes. Use more if necessary. Try to avoid getting any on the catalytic converter. Top and bottom, and even in the back wall above where the catalyst is. And you can see how well it starts working. Make sure you wear protective gloves. And you may want to put a mask on if the fumes a little bit too much. So we'll let that rest five minutes, then we'll come back in and scrub. Now, after five minutes, go with a green 3M scrubby and really start putting some elbow grease on the surfaces to lift up some of the uh, baked on foods. Again, staying away from the catalyst in the very rear of the oven on both the top and bottom. Doing your best to get all the sides as clean as you can get them. And that looks pretty good. After scrubbing, I just got a pail of warm water and another clean towel just to go ahead and 
really get all the, the oven cleaner and leftover grime out of the oven. So you have to just really rinse and get all the chemicals out. I do the same to all the parts in the back, taking each of the jet plates, scrubbing them as well as the belt. I'm rinsing that with a, uh, a dish hose, and then we're ready to reassemble. Prior to reassembly, we recommend you taking a clean rag and Turbo Chef oven guard and spraying liberally on the towel and again covering all surfaces. This will make it easier for you to clean it next time. Prior to reassembly, we recommend that you use oven guard on both the top and bottom jet plates. That will help food sticking from sticking to it. Don't apply the oven guard to any other part like the conveyor as that's for food services uh, when it comes in contact with food. We also recommend that you put oven guard on the interior surface of the door. This too will also prevent uh, future occurrences of food being stuck to it. When reassembling, notice at the top half there is an air duct coming out to the left. You will try to mate that air duct on the top with the piece uh, with the, the jet plate. And to line that up, it helps to bring our hand over here when we bring the plate in to help guide it into the orifice. I'm going to be replacing the jet plates back into the oven. I'm going to start with my top first, although it doesn't matter which order you go in. Uh, to do that, I'm going to be flipping this way. And this is the part that needs to go into the orifice you saw in the last shot. And this here, there's a hanger inside the oven. When you get about halfway, it'll start, it'll start to hold the oven for you. And I'm going to use my hand as a plate and guide that in. Once it's seated and these are flush with the front, take this and over the sleeve here and you're just going to press that into place to lock it. We'll take our second one and try to line it up with the core individually and lock it into place. Now we're ready to place our belt assembly back into the unit. Now as I have both my cogs facing the unit, so I'm going to pick this up, and if you notice here, this is the indented spot where it slides over the oven cavity. So we're going to line that up as best we can and just slide it into place. To connect the chains, we're going to start with the right hand side. And we're going to lift this up and push that forward a little bit. And we're going to pull it back so it seats. So now we're connected. On the opposite side, we're going to lift, place, and set down. Now the belt is connected and ready to operate. Next, we're going to place the door. Notice there are two pins here and here, and two hinges. A little tricky, but you have to place them so that they rest over. 
and slide into place. Close the door, put the latches, and lock into place. Now we'll take our ancillary items, like the crumb trays, and slide one into each end with the thumb hole facing forward so that you can pull it out easily the next time. And right into there. Next are our two chain covers. There's one that is much larger. It looks like this. This is going to be the left hand side if you're looking at the oven. This groove here slides over the conveyor and slots in perfectly in seats. On the right hand control side, this one here also feels the same way, but also has a little bit of a, a nipple on the end here. This will place over on the conveyor side, slide in, and that nipple seats right there in that notch. Next we're going to place our two extenders on. These here just slide right over, those two ears flip. And the same thing on the opposite side. The conveyor oven is now completed and ready to operate. As part of your daily maintenance, in the rear of the oven there are two filters, one on each side. They simply lift out and can be hosed off, dried, then reinserted. Those are your air intakes and should be, be clean at all times.